Hey guys, as you may know, I did a TEDx talk in the summer about my experience with the Lion Diet, the all meat diet that put my autoimmune disorder that caused crippling arthritis and gave me two joint replacements into remission. I followed TEDx's guidelines very carefully as I'm aware my experience with diet is anecdotal. I finished the talk asking the medical system to look into the diet further. We spent the last four months going back and forth with TEDx because they won't post the talk. I was the only talk from that TEDx conference that they refused to post. They said my talk went against their community guidelines, but couldn't name exactly what it went against. And it didn't. Like I said, I was really careful. Since then, Harvard has put out a study on the carnivore diet that I've linked below, showing other people who have also had success putting their diseases into remission. This is something that should be taken seriously and looked into. TEDx is supposed to be a place for new ideas and novel thinking and anecdotal reports. They have tons of vegan talks claiming veganism cures diseases, but my story didn't make it through because it violated community guidelines they can't name. So I decided to put it up here. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Michaela Peterson, and I'm here to talk about how I put my idiopathic autoimmune disorder and mood disorder and chronic fatigue into remission with an extreme elimination diet of only eating meat. But I will start at the beginning. When I was two, I started walking with my feet out like a duck. And by the time I was in grade two, I was walking downstairs one foot at a time, complaining that my shoes were too small. And I was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis active in 37 joints. I was put on methotrexate and naproxen to get my symptoms under control, and had cortisone injected into 17 of my joints in grade two. I was sitting on a chair in class because I couldn't sit on the carpet, because I couldn't sit on my knees or cross my legs. I was using this really ugly, fat pencil because I couldn't hold a pencil because I couldn't close my hand. When I was in grade four, I was put on Enbrel, a biologic immune suppressant, and I started injecting myself with Enbrel and methotrexate twice a week, and I was put into a medically re induced remission, and I went on all the sports teams I could go on. I went from being nearly wheelchair-bound to playing sports. At the same time, my mental health declined dramatically, and I started experiencing OCD symptoms and suicidal thoughts, and I was put on SSRIs and diagnosed with major depressive disorder, uh, potentially bipolar type 2 with hypomania. When I was in grade 8, I started experiencing the sensations of mosquitoes biting my whole body uh, and chronic fatigue. And by chronic fatigue, I mean I couldn't wake up and I was falling asleep in class. By the time I was in grade 11, my arthritis had gotten bad enough that it had destroyed all the cartilage in my right hip. And I stopped being able to sleep because of the pain and was put on OxyContin. And when I was 17, I had my hip replaced. While I was healing from my hip replacement, my body destroyed all the cartilage in my left ankle, and I ended up walking on basically broken bones. So I had my ankle replaced, so that was 17. Uh, I went off to university, and my mental health deteriorated further. I was, they tried to stabilize me with Wellbutrin, and I ended up having a grand mal seizure at the university library. They tried to stably, stabilize me with an SNRI, and I was so angry I felt like I could claw my skin off. But a year and a half into university, this gets better, I swear. <laughs> about, about a year and a half, <laughs> about a year and a half into university, uh, I was so fatigued that I missed my final exams, and I dropped out and went home. When I got home, I started experiencing a rash on my back and on my bum and then on my face. And when it got to my face, I thought, OK, arthritis is one thing. Idiopathic hypersomnia or chronic fatigue is one thing. Chronic depression is one thing. But like a rash on my face, I cannot handle that. And I started researching. December 2014, uh, the rash stopped healing. And I went to dermatologist after dermatologist and they said, you know, stop doing this, you're anxious. And I was like, okay, that's not super helpful. Uh, so I figured, if I don't figure out what's wrong with me, I'm going to die, because my body was destroying its tissues. At that point, 
I was on Tylenol 3 to take at night because the shoulder pain was so bad from the arthritis that wasn't kept in check that I couldn't sleep. I was taking 40 milligrams of Adderall just to wake up in the morning because of the idiopathic hypersomnia. I was taking Dapsone, which is used an antibiotic used to treat leprosy so that my skin would heal. I was taking 40 milligrams of escitalopram for the depression. I was taking an inhaler because if I got a cold, it would turn into bronchitis, that would turn into pneumonia, and I'd end up in the hospital because of the immune suppressants. I was taking a prescription strength antihistamine because I was so allergic to trees and grass that I was verging on anaphylaxis in the spring. Anyway, there were more. So I started researching and I came across this rash eventually called dermatitis herpetiformis, which is the skin manifestation of celiac disease, which is an autoimmune disorder that can be triggered by gluten. And I thought, holy shit, is it, <laughs> is it celiac disease the whole time? So I cut out gluten, I went off of my immune suppressants, which weren't really working anyway, given the fact I'd lost a hip and an ankle. And I started monitoring my symptoms really closely to look for flare-ups. In September 2015, I reduced my diet further because cutting out gluten wasn't enough. And I thought, if I'm gonna be doing this for the rest of my life, researching, trying to figure out what's wrong with me, I might as well rule out diet. So I went down to meat and greens and certain root vegetables that I didn't really like, like carrots, sweet potatoes, parsnips. Uh, I cut out all the foods that I thought could be potentially causing inflammation. And that month, my skin healed for the first time in a number of years. Uh, I lost three pants sizes of bloating I didn't know I had. Two months into that, my fatigue went away for the first time since grade eight, and I stopped taking Adderall. Three months into that diet, my depression went away for the first time in my entire life. And I went from living in hell to being in heaven, a hell that I didn't know I'd been living in. And I thought, OK, well, I'm not taking any drugs ever again. And I stopped taking my SSRI over a two-week period without realizing, because nobody told me, that SSRI withdrawal exists. And for the next two years, I had the most horrific experiences of my entire life, and that is saying something. Um, I, I reintroduced soy a couple of weeks after I went off of SSRIs, and I had a full-blown autoimmune response. And it started with my digestion was upset, my entire body got itchy. The next day, my depression was back, worse than I'd ever experienced, and I got into the shower and thought, how could I be so arrogant as to think I could control this disease with diet? And I cried. Four days later, I had mouth ulcers, my arthritis was back, my rash was back, and I got my brother to drive me home from my parents because I didn't think I could drive. And I got out of the car and I went to my apartment, I turned around, and my brother's head looked like that. For about two seconds, he looked at me and he went off, and then it was my brother again, and I thought, oh my God, I just stopped, stopped taking all my medication and now I'm insane. So for the next year, I went in and out of what I now know was SSRI withdrawal mixed with an autoimmune disorder and food sensitivities, and I had 24-day long reactions each time I tried to reintroduce a food. About a year after that, I figured maybe I'll just stop reintroducing foods and not experience this. And at that time, I got pregnant, which I didn't even know I would be able to do given all the medications I'd been on. I went down to meat and greens to try and get my symptoms under control. And a year after that, I was breastfeeding, getting out of bed, my wrist buckled. I thought, OK, I, I, have, to, I have to do something, because I'm worried I'm going to drop my baby. The arthritis was back. I was itchy everywhere. And I was like, how is this possible? If I'd experienced remission, why isn't that diet working anymore? And I cut everything out except for beef. And two weeks after doing that, thinking I'm nuts, and hopefully I don't get vitamin deficiencies, uh, the itch went away, and my joints started to feel better. Four weeks after that, so six weeks after an all-beef diet, the depression lifted, and I stopped crying in the morning. And five months after that, the anxiety lifted, and I was back in what I felt was heaven compared to how I'd been living. So that's all beef, all lamb, salt, and water. Now, I've been talking about this diet to spread awareness and to hope in hopes that the medical community can take something like this seriously. My mom went on the diet, and her osteoarthritis went away. My dad went on the diet, and he lost 70 pounds. 
his GERDs went away, he had psoriasis, that went away. I've talked to thousands of people with autoimmune disorders who've done similar things and seen similar results. So that is me now, that is my kid. Uh, I'm a CEO, I'm a podcaster. Uh, I try to share my experience to get people to see what this kind of diet does for me. I call it the lion diet because it's not cool to be this restricted and it, it's not cool to have an autoimmune disorder and people who are sick feel isolated and miserable. So I'm trying to make it cool, but what would be really cool would be if the medical community could take this seriously and do some case studies. That's it.